gathering in here last night. Ash and Marie popped into the van and uh, had a little reminisce in, in here, a bit of a change of scenery. Yeah, it was really cool to, to be back in here again. Them two were just... Them two were saying how like weird it is to be to be back in the van. And um, just nattered away throughout the night and discussed. I don't have my coffee yet, so this conversation's not going well. Yeah, yes, I'll do it later. to the barbecue plans last night and was continuing to do so today. I know mate, I know. Ridiculous. You couldn't you couldn't write it. I remember covetously gazing on at Bolski as he just had the best time with a piece of wood out in the snow. A soothing reminder of what life could be if one was to give less of a f This is Bolsky given his least f that his back legs are failing him, or that he's aging, or that time he was a puppy and learning how to sit comes slowly to him, or the other dogs learning ages ago. Why can't you just master how to sit? Not really knowing why he should sit in the first place, it's his ass. No, Bolsky don't give a f right now. And it was here I realised that I'd travelled 3,000 miles to the wilds of Sweden, stood in the middle of a blizzard, and was being taught life lessons from a border collie. <sighs> it's over. Look at this. Why are you in a veg patch? Oh, Lance always gets... Um, There's one thing I've learned from previous low points, is when in these ruts, I've got to keep occupied or distracted.
Today we'll involve the tractor, if we can coax it into life. First off, we're heading over to Ash's friend Eric's to borrow a piece of equipment that would make mincemeat out of chopping the firewood. But before we could do that and hit the road, we had to get the snow chains off. This thing was absolutely awesome. 70 years old, still going. Built back when England could make things. But before work got started, Ash was gonna let me loose in it. <laughs> look at that. You'll have a very hard job stalling this, so right, I don't okay. worry about that. But handbrake, down here. Okay. But yeah, you sort of press that and you've got to pull that in. And release, and that'll take your handbrake off. Cool. Clutch. Right. And that's your throttle. It's meant to have a governor, but don't. So right. it's just direct to engine okay. throttle. <laughs> <laughs> so you just probably put it about there or something. Yeah. And, feel. and then, yeah, normal like a car. Oh, like yours now, with the manual. Yeah. Put so it in like two or three two to start three. with. Even okay. four's fine. But five is bottom right, and that will take off quite quickly. Yeah, I'll leave that one alone, I think. But yeah, one to four are working gears. Right. So that's okay. all like. Go for the field and shit. Yeah. yeah. The brakes are okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to be going fast anyway. No. If, if you're going along and then you wind the throttle down a little bit, it will slow down by itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you don't need much brake. Okay. Yeah. I think there's probably technique with like double clutching or something, but it don't sound good. No. Trying to change. No. That's about it. There we go. Instantly, I forgot half of the instructions, but after a minute or two of faff, I was away. Ash was up front in the tractor, and I'd follow up behind on something I haven't been on for ages. As a teen, I used one of these a lot, gamekeeping on the farm, so this was going to bring back a lot of memories. Huh? Yeah! F*** it! Yeah, quickly it became apparent that that was a bad idea. Only a few metres down the track, the snow turned to hail. And not only that, it was about zero today and I'd forgot my gloves. And Ash was having problems of his own. Oh, a trip down memory bastard lane. Thank you. Time to settle again. A quick stop off at the local petrol container. And then over to meet Eric, who was already using the contraption. We 
across Sweden by the time we'd got over to Eric the weather had gone back to summertime and Eric a lovely chap with many big boy toys showed us the ropes on this cutting equipment that his dad had built from scratch which when you see it up close is super impressive it uses the hydraulics of any tractor that it's attached to to force a massive spiked guillotine down into a log and split it clean in half with the tutorial out of the way we headed over to swap it onto Ash's tractor and this was actually going to be the first bit of hydraulic equipment Ash had fitted to his tractor so there was a bit of testing and fettling to do but he was like a kid in a candy shop seemed well, so we shot off to go and play. Enough field was in position, the log pile was a plenty, but annoyingly the very first log revealed a problem. only 25 horsepower. Hey, look at this way, it looks cool. Yeah, I'll get a picture at least. Yeah, yesterday, unfortunately, didn't quite go to plan wood-wise. Um, we had a good look over the tractor, and uh, Ash and Eric both think um, there's like a pressure release valve, and because the little tractor's so old, Either that's just not right or it's worn and it's just opening too soon and not allowing the tractor to have the pressure. So yeah, it's a bit of a shame that we didn't get to just slice all of Ash's firewood up in one foul swoop, um, but one of them. And that little project will continue over on Ash's channel. If you don't already, I highly recommend checking Ash out. Lost in Europe on YouTube and Patreon is always fixing, tinkering or playing with cool old stuff and the content is top notch. Meanwhile, I'm fumbling with shoes. Three weeks old. They're already looking pretty worn. Just snow, rock, constant wet, dry, wet, dry. Aged them. But today we'll be getting back on the tractor and putting it through more trials, as the snow had now melted all around that beaver fell tree we chopped up, so we could get in to go and collect that just we'll then bring it back and do it the old-fashioned way and this time lance is going to come along for the ride too mm, well now someone is telling me i got footage muddled up in the wrong folder somewhere down the line as lance's coat is now miraculously grown back yeah, a master of continuity over it. The snow chains had to come off regardless to save damage to the roads and them, but annoyingly the snow hadn't completely melted, meaning that they would have been kind of useful here, and even more so a little further on.
so deep now. Lance. Yeah. And brown. Get out. I might drive through that. Might get stuck. Might not. <laughs> that worked. Yeah, smashed it. Only saw one slip. Yeah, I mean, on one hand, it's practice. Yeah. extra weight and now uphill. The way out was a lot more challenging than the way in. Oh, yeah. But this old grandma can still lift weights. Snow! This may all seem like a chore, but I was loving every second of it. I may also be repeating myself and saying this already, so if I am, I apologise. I can't remember everything. But I was taking a lot from these days of wood collection and sawing. So much so that now in present day, me and Ash continue on farming simulator. We don't farm, we chop down trees. <laughs> it's not a chore at all. I'm outside with my mate, chatting away. The sun's out, Lance is free to roam where he wants. And we're back doing what we were doing basically three years ago. During this day, Ash would very often say things like, Are you sure you're alright doing this? And you don't have to, you can go and chill. But this wasn't just helping them too. It was a very meditative experience that was sorting me right out. And it felt good to know that the work put in now would keep the barn heated next winter long after I've gone. Which would actually be tomorrow. Today is my last day. Behind us, we noticed a tree that really wasn't going to stay up that much longer and should really probably be brought down. Yep. <laughs> Let the wind, wind's moving it. Yeah. Worth noting at this point that neither of us are tree surgeons. Standard. Hey, 
This is. Yeah, I mean, that is solid. Mm. I thought that was going to be rotten. So, I kind of want to walk up it, but I know they'll end bad. <laughs> but there's like three cameras on. Just surf it on the way down. <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit. Yeah, you're all right. Yeah. Ooh. I can see that going up your arsehole there. <laughs> oh, is it? Do it look bad? <laughs> He's among us. <laughs> there he is. Piss off a ginger. Yeah, man. Good dent. Popped out to test Ash's van now that the summer tyres were up. Oh. You can feel it squiggle. <laughs> the nimble expert. <laughs> no problem. That's Duh. the famous. That's on uh, the new Bond film, isn't it? Yeah, I've not seen it. You've not seen it? Oh, it's a sick chase on that road. Oh, yeah, it's that road. Mm. Oh. This this super mega mountain area is what's parallel with us. Right, so you don't actually have to go up. No, you can just I think the further north you go, the flatter it gets, to be honest. Right. That's something you get familiar with very quickly. Waterfall is... Just, oh. you know, it comes across the road. I've got to do it. This is where... Have you ever watched Troll Hunter? No. Okay, if we go Norway, you've got to watch Troll Hunter first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because it's all filmed here. Right. This is like proper wilderness area. When you get out onto the, oh the top. Oh, God. Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh. It's a cove. Oh, crotch level. Oh. We went to sit up on the ridge line, surrounded by lingonberries, the sauce you get with the IKEA meatballs, and discuss the future. Next adventures and projects, both realistic and ridiculous. What's in store for all the vans now that life is slowly creeping forward, and the hard truth that technically we both have outdated van life channels. But at least we did it right, and had a lot of fun. Been watching uh, Ash's side of our uh, gathering. Because um, Ash, I don't know how he does it, manages to just fire one out every day. <laughs> and I've just got complete creative block. It's not helped by um, I lost some footage. The uh, hard drive corrupted some files. So I'm just trying to think of a new way to really start them. Um, I had a bit of an idea in my mind and now now I don't I, I didn't want to see it all through a lens you know it's good to get it but it's got to be the secondary thing it has to be the secondary thing I know at the time I wasn't in the mood when setting off um, and then eventually like I get into him but I just got to push through the slog of the start. At the minute, though, uh, <laughs> I'm just waiting for this to back everything up. 
because uh, after that whole ordeal of losing stuff, it's now there's certain stuff about this trip that I can't afford to lose. It has been everything and more that I was hoping for. Um, every day has just been awesome. And I'm tired today, physically tired from all that wood cutting and there's a lot to be said for that, like the physical tiredness when you get in and you just veg. So it's a great thing. Oh yeah, there's there's a muscle I haven't felt in a while. Ooh. Well, this has still got two hours to go. There is a lot of footage over the past two weeks. <laughs> a lot. Just don't have it at the moment. <clears throat> dinner is being arranged so it is time to head back in good talk <laughs> we never did get round to cementing the franken stove but that's okay i think we were kept pretty busy with all the other things we got up to and most certainly almost recaptured the magic of our lockdown camp and Belize. Almost because, well, we were missing our fourth member and host. I filmed quite a bit less than last time, but I hope you liked what you did see. Is he lost? That's probably what he's calling. Yeah. Where am I? Where am I? Hello? Hello? Oh, is it not the spot anymore? This is the smoky spot. Double, triple. Oh, Bob, your, your gown has come down. Let me get that for you. There we go. Are you having a lie down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just see him in the basket. <laughs> <laughs> was in the basket. <laughs> oh, it's all right, mate. To Sabla, didn't you? Hey? Yo. And with that, as well as watching Troll Hunter and Team America somewhere along the way, was the final night at the barn. And today it was time to... Oh yeah. Whoops. Damn it. That's, uh... Yeah, that one's bust. That one's completely gone. There's a little bit. That's crash number 406, but... Only two props gone. Done. Let's see this. On you. There we go. This thing's a machine. Yeah, so today was the tired day we were leaving. It had been an incredible two weeks. Weirdly, it felt longer than that, in a good way. But at the exact same time, just not long enough. 
But I felt so happy and grateful to see these guys once again and to see the life they'd carved way up here. And that Lance was able to see his best buddy too. The blizzard had passed and the snow was now almost gone, making the place look very different to when I arrived. But it was still freezing today though, making the ground hard. So hopefully once I'd packed everything down, I could just pull out of my parking spot without bogging down. What's this, Simon? Take me washing line off first. <laughs> oh, well, that never happens. Well, got to leave in style. I did leave a bit of a mark in the garden, but nowhere near as much as our friend Simon did in his six ton V8 motorhome, which went basically subterranean. So I still had that. I dislodged the waffle boards from the floor and the van's arse, reattached them, and then before the goodbyes, got some food in us for the road ahead. Omelette for me, no omelette for Lance. Call it omelette, it's literally just an egg. Long old day today, mate. It right. I hate goodbyes, and I'm famously horrifically bad at them. And hellos. And talking in general, actually. But this one was the worst in a while, largely because we have to separate these two. Lance and Bolski are pretty unsociable dogs. They don't really get on with other dogs. But during lockdown, to all of our surprise, they become inseparable. I made it through and said my goodbye without being too awkward, but then it was time. Once again, it felt very strange being back in the driver's seat. The van literally hadn't moved since we'd been here, but nothing lasts forever and it was time to hit the road again. The bridge I arrived when I first come here was looking very different on the way out and I crossed it, not with home, but Norway in my sights. By no means was the adventure over yet, and I wasn't gonna be going on my own. 